So, so what is the time required for performing floating point addition? Performing floating point multiplication. Can you just tell me what would be the time required for, suppose I have something like 1 point m into 2 power k. and 1 point n into 2 power r represented in IEEE 754 format what it means to add and what it means to multiply this So what it means to add and what it means to multiply? So how do you add two, two numbers in this format? So how, forget IEEE 754, how do you add these two? Same exponent. Huh? Uh, make them as the same exponent. How do you make them as the same exponent? Make the lower one minus and higher. Huh? Make the one with less uh, two power thing match the one with higher ones. We have to convert it. Okay. okay. So, so how do you do that? Yeah, that's that's what he said by matching. So how do you do that? This is K and this is R. Yeah. Okay. So basically, we'll find out K minus R. Uh, or r minus k whichever maximum and then so whichever is less we go and shift it by what right or left okay so whichever is less we can go and shift it by uh, right or whichever is more we can shift it by left right so by then we can match these exponents so what is the cost of shifting where do you shift so if I shift it gets multiplied by 2 power k, if I, uh, if I shift k times then I, uh, it gets multiplied by 2 power k, okay. If I, sh uh, this is shift left, if I shift right k times it becomes 2 power minus k, so, so we can do one of these operations. So shifting is a constant operation, so I, I go and subtract this or add this, meaning addition is subtraction, so essentially uh, after that I do a shifting. So there is an addition involved plus there is a shifting involved, okay. So so that is again constant time. After that what do you do? After add addition or shifting what do you do? Just add. Uh, oh, so, so, so this, this gets into some value. So you add, uh, add the mantissa part. So there is an add, a shift, then another add, then followed by a normalization. Okay. So we need to normalize and bring it to some one one dot k into some two power um, k l m one dot l into two power. max of kr or min of kr. So we have to do that. So note that a floating point addition also involves only addition, addi integer addition, right. So these two adds are integer adds, right, because I can treat them as integer and do the addition, okay. So how do you multiply? Same, we will multiply separately. How do you? Oh. The, this part separately and then uh, Add those both. Add the expand. Add, add exponent. Add, add, add the exponent and uh, multiply the mantisa. Multiply. M multiply. Multiply mantisa. Add exponent. Yes, sir. Then add whatever uh, from mantisa we will have a. We'll have to shift. And normalize. That's all. 
Is that it? Or something more? So it's 1 plus mantis R. Huh? Is mantis R still considered as 1.m or? Yeah, 1.m, one point M, whatever, that value. So I multiply mantis R, add exponent, then normalize. Sign bit. Huh? Sign. Add just sign bit, okay. That's all? <coughs> Did you revise? Check overflow on overflow. That's okay. Well within the limit. Did you did you go and read IEEE 754? Whatever I thought that day. Is this correct or something wrong in this multiplication? Ah, okay. So if I keep adding, this is already XS 127 format. So this will become excess. 254 format, right? So I have to subtract after adding exponent, I have to subtract 127 because this is excess 127 format, this is also excess 127 format. If I add k plus r, it becomes excess 254 format. So I, sh I should go and subtract. So I should add k plus r after it is stored in IEEE 754 format and then subtract 127 format. So that is very important crucial. Right? Okay. So again, please note that <coughs> uh, the multiplication also. So this is integer multiplication, this is integer addition, and then normalization. So your floating point arithmetic, at least addition and multiplication, is as complex as integer addition or as simple as integer addition and integer multiplication. It's just composing of a constant number of integer additions and or inter integer multiplication stuff. So that is why if you look at the algebraic model of computation which you use for uh, normal algorithmic analysis, you find that uh, floating point addition and multiplication are also treated equivalent to integer addition and integer multiplication because they also take the same amount of time, some constant multiple of that. So order wise it is same. So Addition can also, addition of floating point number also can be done in order log n time, multiplication also in order log n time and so is uh, integer addition and integer multiplication, okay. So this is something that we need to keep in mind. So when we are trying to analyze an algorithm, uh, there is a theoretical analysis, there is a practical analysis. So when we do the practical analysis or even when we perform a theoretical analysis of an algorithm which you are supposed to implement and show good speed up. Now these are the things that, these are some small bits that we will we'll talk about lot of things as you proceed in this beta curriculum. But these are some fundamental things that you should keep in mind about the practical, practical uh, validations of some of the models of computation that you assume while you are doing the analysis, okay. So, so now let me give you a very small question so that we can. Okay, I, I want you to design a circuit uh, which takes which takes uh, n bit number x as input and another. select bit y, right. If y equal to 0, I need the output to be 2x. If y equal to 1, I need the output to be 2x plus 1. I will give you just 3 minutes and you design a circuit which takes a n bit number x as input and another select bit y. If y equal to 0, I need output 2x. If y equal to 1, I need 2x plus 1. How many gates? I want you to design a circuit with all. We have been talking of minimization, right? Which will use minimum number of gates x is a n bit number. 
what is the number of gates finally okay right so how many people can understand the number of gates required for this circuit is zero so i have x0 x1 till xn and this is the select bit y the answer is just this is the n plus 1 so when y is 0 you get 2x it's just left shifted so you just shifted by one bit that's all right so there are many many interesting questions like this which will require zero gates okay so we will uh, we will discuss as we proceed uh, in this course okay this is one very simple example which uh, many many uh, placement companies ask in their interview okay so fan okay thanks